Hello and welcome everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started with our virtual art club. So this is our third virtual art club and we're really excited to keep this program going even through this pandemic. I'm Heather Placco, I'm the program manager at the museum and we're happy to have everyone join in today. As always, a very special welcome to our members and our Visionary Society members who make programming just like this happen all the time. And we do ask that during the presentation, you keep yourselves on mute until the end when we'll welcome questions and comments and observations. Um, those will definitely be encouraged. Also feel free to um, type questions in the comments bar if you don't wanna speak verbally. If you'd prefer to just type your comments, I will monitor that and make sure Joe gets to those as well. All right, so without further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce our presenter today, Joe McGuire. And Joe, if you'd like to go ahead and begin, take it away. Well, thanks for having me, Heather. This is a real honor to be, to help uh, programming for the fabulous Peoria Riverfront Museum and all the great stuff that you guys do. So uh, I'll just dive right in. I've always enjoyed art ever since I was a little kid, ever since I could hold a pencil and find a grocery bag or something. I always just loved to draw. I drew my whole life, drew my brothers and sisters. Enjoyed it all the way through high school. I was an art major at Illinois State University. I graduated with a graphic design major way back when, many, many years ago, back in 1977. And my first job out of college was a graphic designer. I was a graphic designer for a company called Brown Sporting Goods. Some people might remember, some of the folks have been around. It's a large 20 store sporting goods chain and I drew ball gloves, and bats, and design newspaper ads and TV commercials. And I got away from art because I was promoted to the advertising director. And then I got into, I got into my career uh, in advertising and media. I worked many years at WEEK TV. And I also uh, worked at the Journal Star, helping local advertisers with advertising campaigns. I did some drawing and some art along the way. Uh, I did, did a few gigs and things, but really for many years, um, I, got a, I, I got totally away from it. And I made this my goal several years ago, seven years ago now, to retire early and really get back to my passion for drawing and painting. And I was able to do that, retire early. I've been doing that ever since. A lot of folks ask me about my career as a TV artist. And uh, if folks might remember a TV show called The Captain Jink Show, it was on in the 60s when I was a youngster. And I used to uh, watch the show. I was a big fan. And they brought it back in the late 70s, just after I did my internship at WEEK. And I was a ship artist. I was there with Captain Jinx and Salty Sam. And I came on one day and taught kids drawing. And I also... Uh, also did something called the Boston Joe game where the kids had a drawing game. And they, you can see in the picture on the right where they were guessing along. And the show was really popular. It came on every day at three o'clock. Uh, I was on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. You can see the captain and Salty there. They were the stars. They were the folks that were on in the 60s and came back in the 70s and they were great to work with. The show was wonderful fun. We had such a great time. Uh, we taped the show on Sunday nights and it aired during the week. And uh, there's a picture, there's my promotional shot. A lot of brown hair back then, as you can see. And uh, that, the, the, le the thing on the left was, was Mighty Mouse. It was a sample of some of the things that I drew. He was a very popular cartoon. And I would set Mighty Mouse there up on the easel and I, with basic shapes, I would show the kids how to draw along. And people still remember me. In fact, just this morning, I was at PetSmart and some lady ran me down from halfway through the store and asked me if I was Boston Joe. And the show had a, a resurgence because during the pandemic, the TV station asked me to do some special segments like I used to do on Boston Joe on Facebook. And if you go to 25 News Facebook page, you'll find it. If you want to go to my page, joetheartguy.com and click on the Captain Jink Show, you can actually watch segments that I did very recently, very much in the style that I used to do for the TV show. Now I'm gonna take you through a few of the things that I really enjoy doing, my passion. And one of them is that I love to draw at live caricature events. I like to draw people, that's probably my favorite thing is to sketch people. 
And uh, I do birthday parties, wedding receptions, corporate events. I travel all through central Illinois. And I figured going way back when I've drawn maybe 15,000 people. Mostly they're quick little sketches that uh, take two or three minutes each. And when folks come to an event or a wedding reception, they get a very special memento, an original piece of art from me. And uh, that's probably one of my favorite things to do. Here's some examples. There's a couple pictures of me working. And as I mentioned, I really draw a lot of wedding receptions lately. There's some wedding receptions that on, on Saturday nights, if I could just clone myself, I could be several different places. And that's a little hint from my friend watching Erica out there. Anyhow, she can't respond. I kind of like that. But anyhow, there's me working. There's a couple, here's a couple more live events. You can see the sketches that I do. Eight by tens for individuals, nine by twelves for couples. And again, as you can see, they're quick. They're caricatures, but they're not really crazy over the top as far as exaggerating the features and stuff. I like to make them more kind of kind of complimentary portrait portraitures. There's a couple more. Did a whole family there as a gentleman I remember doing at a wedding reception. This kind of gives you a little feel for the kind of caricature work that I like to do. Well, there's a couple more, another wedding reception, uh, mostly black and white because of black and white speed's really important to get through a lot of folks. And so uh, color only if it's a small gathering will I take the time to, to do color. Art classes really like to teach. Uh, I teach mostly for the Final Lac Park District and for the Washington <laughs> District, those are two areas that I, I teach for. And I do homeschool classes. I do senior care classes at senior care facilities. Now, of course, all of this, the caricatures, the art classes, especially the senior care facilities, all been kind of on hold since the pandemic started. And I hope to get back. You know, I've done a couple things Zoom, but I really like working live and, and hoping I can especially get back and do the classes. Here's a couple, here's a class, a, a Fine Lake Park District class, example of a painting we did. The, the beach scene was one that was done over two days, two different sessions. And I put the one on the right because it shows a nice quick painting that I can teach, takes just a couple hours. And if that's the one session class, there's some more folks uh, working there. There's a nice fall scene that we painted with a sailboat. There's a gentleman working on watercolor. I teach acrylic and watercolors mostly. I like to paint with oils at home, but oils are so hard to transfer. They take a long time to draw. Almost all the work that I teach in my classes is acrylic and watercolor. There's another group that's a watercolor painting, Washington Park, and shows another student working hard on her painting. And I like to do kids. Uh, kids, uh, there, there's one there that shows that they, I think that's a drawing class. And the picture on the right was a student that was helping me with a painting that I did for, uh, for the Northwoods Mall a few years ago. Some people might see our Northwoods Mall art up there when you go out there. Painting parties, I like to do painting parties too. And this is the kind of thing that's kind of gotten popular, you know, with uh, the art, the paint and sip classes, where you can have a beverage or a meal and over a couple hours, create a nice painting. And I do that for folks. I do that quite a bit, again, uh, before the pandemic started. But uh, I go to folks' homes to do it. I go to maybe a common area like their uh, condo uh, meeting room. And I do go to restaurants and do classes too. And usually it's about eight to 15 folks. It's a subject that would take just a couple hours. And the host charges about 15 or $20 each. And that's most of what I get. I don't want to talk too much about the business side unless you guys want to ask about it on the other side of uh, this when you ask questions. But they're a lot of fun. The painting pro uh, pro parties are a lot of fun. And it's just so much fun to see folks think, who think they've never, they can't paint. They've never picked up a paintbrush. They're terrible. But again, if they follow the, 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 uh, the subject that I put together, I do it in stages. They come out with very, very good results. There's a group of, uh, that was for Illinois State. That's 
the bell on the uh, quad, if folks know that, and show some of the painters working. Having a good time, again, a nice beverage there. They, at the end of the uh, time, they have a nice, uh, nice painting that's suitable for framing. There's another group of painters. This one was a group of uh, folks in their condo did that, did a sunset. That's one I showed you earlier. The, the painting up in the upper left is an example of a good two hour painting, which happens to be fall of Grandview Drive. Love to paint at Grandview Drive. And paint pouring. I started doing paint pouring uh, parties and classes. Very easy technique. Some of you might be familiar with it where you pour the paint on in layers. You spray a little silicone in between. And folks, kids from, from seniors can achieve amazing results with the paint pouring. And uh, those are some of the parties. I do classes too, but they make a really fun paint party too is to do a paint pour. And those are some examples of the painting. And there's a, a mom and uh, her daughter working on their paint pour. So now I move on to commission projects. I get lots of calls, lots of emails all through the year, people asking me to do specialized uh, projects of their family. It could be a character of their family, it could be their pants, it could be their house, it could be their garden. Lots of different types of projects that I do all through the years. And I base it on how much hours, I, how many hours it takes. You know, a quick caricature can take a half hour or, or a painting of a house could take 10 hours. And that's kind of how I base my prices. But I really like working on special projects for, for folks. Here's a couple examples. There's a couple that shot me their, their photograph and I did kind of a, a caricature, a portrait of them. And I like to do doggies and kitties. And there's a nice little doggy acrylic painting that I did for for a lady actually over in Bloomington, a cute little, cute little pup that uh, I drew for her. Let's see if she has some more examples. There's an example of, uh, of a gentleman who was Vietnam vets. The, the, they asked me to draw their dad, actually had passed away and they wanted something at the visitation and they had a nice piece of art of him and uh, all they framed it up and everything and had a really nice representation of their dad. And then I, draw, I love to draw families. This is a nice little family again with their pooch in the picture. Uh, just fun projects for me to draw. Usually they give me, you know, a few days, maybe a week or so to complete it and I get to get them their art. The one on the left was kind of fun. I got this kind of weird call from a lady. She said she wanted me to draw her on the moon and her dog, Zora, and she is from Russia, so she wanted her planting the Russian flag on the moon with the, with the earth in the background. So I thought, okay, this is kind of nutty, but what the heck? So there you have it. There she is with, uh, with her pooch and they're on the moon and the earth is in the background just as she had. She loved it. She made a Christmas card out of it and sent it to all her friends. And the one on the right was some White Sox fans. They're known as the Section 108ers. And they wanted a, a, a photo, a, a caricature of them. And they put it on t-shirts and they put it on stuff that they mail and on their Facebook page and all that. So those are some of the kind of the fun commission projects that I do. A couple more quick uh, commission projects. The one on the left was a proposal. The, the young man wanted me to draw a picture of her, him proposing to his future wife. She is from Mexico and she, he asked me to write the proposal in Spanish and leave a little bubble for her blank. And that's how he proposed her. It got her and had this all set up and showed her the artwork and she filled in the, 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 uh, the uh, bubble, yes. The one on the right, I do a lot of uh, projects for Caterpillar folks, especially when they're retiring. And I don't know the story behind this one on the right, but this is a gentleman that was retiring and this is what they asked me to draw for Norman, this guy retiring. And it was 11 by 14 and they put it in a nice frame and gave it to, to Norman at his uh, retirement party. And I guess he really liked it. I've done a lot of those over the years. Pets, commission projects for pets. The one on the left is more of a cartoon of this cat, Seshi. And the one on the right is more of a serious painting of this, this dog. Lo really enjoy drawing and painting pets. Not in person as much. And when they give me a picture, I really like drawing the pets. And I do homes. 
The one on the lower right is a home that uh, the folks actually live up here in Illinois, but they want a painting of a house they own down in Florida. And the one on the left was a pencil sketch of the home this uh, young man grew up in. And I guess they were demolishing the home and he wanted to have a record of it. I'll be honest with you, homes or anything architectural is not my favorite thing. I really like doing things that are more free form. If somebody calls and asks me, I'll give it a shot. But uh, I'm more of a free form kind of artist, not as much into when people ask me to draw things or paint things that are architectural in nature. Landscape paintings. I love to do landscape paintings, and that's probably one of my favorite things to do next to drawing people. And uh, I just, just like to even get out there, especially clean air, as they call it, right? Painting on location. And I do oils and acrylics, and I've painted hundreds of paintings. And it got started funny. You know, I mentioned before that I got away from art. And, uh, I, and, and my wife, Kathy, always knew that. She always knew I had an earning to get back to it. And about 20 years ago, she got me a Bob Ross class. We all know who Bob Ross is, right? Our, our Afro-haired guy from PBS who got so many millions of people started painting. And back in the day, and I think he still has it, although Bob's passed away, he has his, uh, his painters that go out into the country, up in, out to the nation and go to different places and teach classes. And that's what Kathy got me about 20 years ago. And this was my Bob Ross painting. I did this painting 20 years ago and it got me going back into painting and really excited. I hadn't painted at all since painting classes back in college. But this was my first Bob Ross class that kind of got me the bug in doing landscape painting. It's framed, it's up in our, up our bedroom right now. It's kind of funny because, I don't know, it was only about a month ago I was watching Bob Ross. Now you can still watch him on PBS on Channel 47 locally. He comes on sometimes at 12.30 and then sometimes at 2.30. But he was painting this scene and there's Bob. You can see Bob, I just shot it right off the TV. And I said, I recognize that painting. And what I did was I went down in the basement and I found the painting I did based on Bob's painting. i watching him do his TV show. And this is the actual painting that I found that was very was was based on the painting you see right there so bob ross some people kind of make fun of him some people especially in art but i think he's great and he's one of my heroes and he got so many people painting and his technique is so easy to learn and anyhow here are some of my landscape paintings the one on the left is actually i did from a photograph in woodford county looking towards the river and whenever I go, I take pictures and I try to paint whenever I travel. And the painting on the right is Acadia National Park in Maine. Kathy and I took a New England trip a couple of years ago and I snapped that painting and that's the painting I teach too. A couple more of my landscapes. The one on the left actually is in my backyard. And uh, looking out into the woods, I'm very fortunate where I live in Germantown Hills. It ha has some woods in the back. Although I did, you know, we all have our creative license, right? did add the blue, the blue uh, flowers. And that's something that you can do too when you paint. It doesn't have to be exactly what you're painting. Um, the one on the right is actually Door County, Wisconsin, a favorite place for Kathy and I to go to vacation. Whenever I go up there, I paint on location. And this is a place called Elson Bay Park. If people are familiar with Door County, it's a peninsula that sticks up from Green Bay. On one side is Green Bay on the uh, on the right side is Lake Michigan, lots, lots of great places to paint, very beautiful place. And I teach that painting as well. And I'm just gonna finish out, the, the one thing that I also do is that, you know, I started setting up at shows like a lot of folk, a lot of artists do, and I had my original paintings there. And, and people say, oh, they're pretty, that's a pretty painting. And they're paint, original artwork that I put hundreds of hours into. I would get an offer for something that I put my blood, sweat, and tears into for many hours and not get as much as I thought I should get, right? But then after a while, I realized that what people really wanted was they really wanted paintings of scenes that they knew. So I started doing more paintings of Grandview Drive, Washington Square, Metamore Gazebo, Pink and Park Lagoon, Lagoon people, that, people that you all know. And then I also started making prints. 
instead of selling the original, I would make maybe a hundred inexpensive prints and I would sign and number them. And I found out that when I went to shows for, for 15 or $20, I could sell prints all day long and people loved them. And they liked the idea that they were hand signed and numbered. And I only made so many of each one, like 20 of a hundred, for example, kind of the Thomas Kincaid approach and a lot of famous artists that started selling limited edition prints. So I did that too. And just to let you know, if you're, a, if you're an artist and you want to sell your art, very inexpensive way to go. This is a print, my, probably my best seller. In fact, I'm almost out. I went to like 90 of 100 of Grandview Drive in the fall. And I painted this on location and uh, sell prints Grandview Drive all day long. It's the world's most famous drive, right? Teddy Roosevelt made our, our famous... Uh, famous area here, right here in the Peoria area, infamous by calling it the world's most beautiful drive. And you know what it is? It is beautiful. I go up there still and I, I paint. In fact, last summer I was up there painting and a, an older couple came up from behind and was watching me paint. And uh, the, the husband told me, he said, you know what? This is almost the exact spot where I proposed to this young, lovely lady 54 years ago. And, uh, so that really made me feel good. And as I was wrapping up, the couple came back and this was a different painting that I was painting. It was an original painting. They bought the painting on the spot. So obviously it meant a lot for them and it was kind of cool to sell a painting that way. The Grandview Drive, that's one of my favorite prints. This is Washington Square. I'm up to like 116 of 125 sold. I sell a bunch of these every year at the Washington Arts Fest. Fingers crossed, hopefully they're, they're still planning to have it mid-August. Um, but Washington Square, the Metamora, the Metamora Gazebo, totally sold out of this a number of years ago. All 100 have been sold. But that was real popular and that was fun to paint. Got the historic courthouse in the background where Lincoln practiced law. And uh, nice scene. I may do another one so that I can start a new series, maybe one in the fall. Pekin Park Lagoon. I sell this every year at the Pekin Marigold Festival. And I have one left, one left of, of the Pekin Park Lagoon. And I have different sizes of prints when I make them, 8 by 10 and 11 by 14. Standard sizes so folks can buy frames without having to do a custom frame. And that's been just a really fun way for me to share, you know, share my love of art is to sell these prints of local Peoria areas. Oops, look at that. We're all done. All done. There's my contact information. If you guys would like to send me an email, that's fine. Check out my, my website, Joe the Art Guy. If you can remember Joe the Art Guy, you can Google that. But I have JoeTheArtGuy.com. Lots more examples of all the artwork that I've created, more paintings, more caricatures, information about how to reach me. If you all want to hire me for an event or something or create a commission artwork, or if you just want to call me or just send me an email, you have questions about your art and what direction you're going. Maybe you're interested in trying some of this yourself. You know, I mentioned the caricatures. You know, it, that's turned out to be a, a pretty good revenue source. I'm, when things are normal, I'm usually at an event once or twice a week, and, and that's fun too. So anyway, Heather, I think that's it. Is there... If you think I left something out, let me know. Um, thanks again very much, folks. I really enjoyed sharing my passion, my love of art with you. And I'm very happy to answer any questions or hear any comments. And whatever you'd like me to do at this point, I'm not sure even where we're at time. I lost track of time here. Well, we have plenty of time left. Um, the easiest way, folks, if you'd like to ask a question and you're not sure how to unmute yourself, you can always just hold down your space bar and that's an easy way to ask a question and temporarily unmute yourself. Otherwise, feel free to um, go ahead and ask questions at this point. I want to ask you, Joe, do you know Susan Palmer? She's an artist. Of well, I think I met her, but I'm not exactly sure. Really. Um, very accomplished uh, artist. Yes, but her little sketchy things are wonderful. You know, she's a very close friend of mine. Excellent. She's used to all these shows and everything. Sure. I'm trying to think of the world. Art community in Peoria. 
I mean, so many very talented people. Well, I, I lived in Normal, and that's how I know her. She lived That's there. where I've heard the name from, sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think she's cool. been at the Sugar Creeks Arts Festival and some of the oh, events. Yeah. Every year, I'm sure. And do you know Nina? Uh, uh, oh, we just can't think of her name. Parnay. Uh, she's another artist, but she's had a year. Would you sure. say her name again? I can't remember the first name for me. Oh, okay, that's all right. Uh, whatever it is, it's Ina or Pina or something like that, but per her name. Okay. I don't know. She's very active, though. I, you may not have met her. Sure, Holly. Yeah. Thanks for showing that. I enjoyed it. Is that Barb King there? It is Barb King. Hey, Barb, how you doing? Good to see you. Nice to see you, too. If you haven't right. taken a class with Joe, he's a great teacher. Well, so, thanks. Yeah, he's very patient. He helps you. I've gotten confident enough to do some of my own things now. So she's, she's put together a great gallery wall in her home of some of the classes and some of her own stuff. And Barb is just, you're still, you're starting to sell some cards and some, some of I your am. cards, right? I am. Yeah. That's really exciting. It's, it, beautiful work in a great way to get your art out there. That's, that's going to be fantastic. I look forward to getting some of those. Well, I'll have to send you an email and show you what I've got available. Excellent. Yep. Yeah, Barb has taken a lot of classes with us at the, at the Washington Park District, and outdoor classes, and uh, just just very very talented artist. Oh, I've, just, I've, I've, I've worked with Erica. Erica is a wonderful artist herself. She teaches, and she does these wonderful ink sketches. I'm Great. telling you, Eric, you could do you could do this this portraiture caricature thing. I'm sure you could at some point if you were interested. Uh, I definitely could. If, um, but I did put a chat. I don't know if you know how to check it. Is it still echoing? Um, but I did put a chat. We need to paint together sometime. Mm -hmm. I'm not, maybe I'm there, not. Now I'm sure. Oh, there's somebody else. <laughs> no, it's me. I'm the same person. I know this is confusing. I have a stop here. Well, there's a chat. Okay. Yeah, we, we need to, Erica. We'll, we'll get out there. We'll get out there and paint together. Painting outside. But you and I, Erica, we can get together. And Barb, yeah. Barb, Barb's taken a couple of the Washington Park District on location classes, too. They're, they're fun. We painted at Bowen Lake. That especially is one of my favorites. So. Right, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Say thank you everyone for coming today and be sure to tune in next month, uh, Tuesday, July 14th at 1 p.m. Central Time, when we'll welcome and share our space with artist Alexander Martin, who's a local Fantastic. artist and um, teaches adjunct at Bradley. Yeah, but if you have any other questions for Joe, he can absolutely answer those. Otherwise, <laughs> uh, we will see you all next time and thank you so much for joining us.